Hello ladies and gentlemen welcome to Triple N Media I am Dr Nick Nickam and this is cardiology lecture series and all our programs are video stream through YouTube and please please do subscribe to our YouTube channel now the feature presentation Hello ladies and gentlemen welcome to Triple N Media I am Dr Nick Nickam and we are going to be talking about acute coronary syndromes it is part of our ACLS cardiology lecture series during this presentation we are going to find out what is an acute coronary syndrome what is the underlying pathophysiology how do patients with acute coronary artery syndrome present what is the role of the emergency medical team what do we do when these patients arrive at the hospital and how do we address rhythm problems blood pressure problem and the drugs used during acute coronary syndrome then we're going to look at three distinct forms of acute coronary syndrome namely STEMI or ST segment elevation myocardial infarction non STEMI or non ST segment elevation myocardial infarction and low risk acute coronary syndromes so let us begin let us look at uh, the pathophysiology that leads to acute coronary syndrome where there is an actual cardiovascular event as you know the heart is supplied by the left the left coronary artery and the right coronary artery and these arteries supply the oxygen to the heart muscle over a course of 20 to 30 years plaques build up inside the coronary arteries which leads to this mounting effect encroaching onto the lumen when there is a thin cap it can sometimes rupture and cause a blood clot generally 90 to 95% of the blockage is caused by a hard plaque and the last 5 to 10% of the blockage is caused by a blood clot and hence these two mechanisms help us to get a better understanding of what happens during an acute coronary syndrome when there is total occlusion of a coronary artery there is total reduction in the blood supply to a area of a heart muscle which dies and that is known in the medical term as uh, acute myocardial infarction if the blockage is less than 100% there may be mild damage to the heart muscle uh, but uh, the circulation may be still present to certain degree and that leads to non stemi or non st segment elevation myocardial infarction how do we deal with patients with acute coronary syndrome during a pre hospital state it begins with the family members who should be knowledgeable about uh, what is chest pain and what causes chest pain uh, so that they can address these problems before they get complicated the best thing to do would be to be aware of the fact that 50% of the people who have heart attack don't make it to the hospital because of severe damage to the heart muscle or due to irregular heart rhythms it is essential to call for help and attend to the patient immediately when the emergency medical team arrives at the hospital uh, they are supposed to take an accurate history of symptoms like chest pain shortness of breath heaviness indigestion dizziness syncope or palpitations immediately they should monitor the vital signs and support the abc's of uh, life support namely airway breathing and circulation once they establish the vital signs and put the patient on a monitor they should be prepared to do any type of cardio pulmonary resuscitation that may be necessary and they should also be able to use a defibrillator if they recognize uh, serious ventricular arrhythmias such as ventricular tachycardia or fibrillation 
routinely they should use a pulse oximeter to measure the oxygen saturation uh, in the fingertips if it is less than 90 percent then the patient should be administered oxygen through the nasal cannula but if it's more than 94 percent the patient does not need supplemental oxygen if the ambulance is equipped with an electrocardiogram machine, they should immediately get an electrocardiogram and transmit that electrocardiogram to the receiving hospital. The emergency medical team should be able to recognize uh, the obvious signs of an acute uh, STEMI or ST segment elevation myocardial infarction. If such is the case, if the patient is having a STEMI and that information should be very promptly conveyed to the receiving hospital, so the receiving hospital makes the preparation for immediate uh, management of a STEMI patient. While on the road, the EMT should also go through a fibrinolytic checklist, that is a, ch a checklist that helps us to determine if the patient is a candidate for administration of blood thinners or fibrinolytic drugs as we call them. They also should prepare for management of a STEMI with a good intravenous line, IV fluids if necessary. And here is a checklist uh, which the emergency team should complete so that it will give us a signal as to whether we can use a fibrinolytic therapy or not you can look through them and we're going to go to the next slide here the patient has arrived at the emergency room what do we do during the first 10 minutes of a patient's arrival in the emergency room again the nurses the technicians the respiratory therapists and the doctors will all be surrounding this patient so it is very important to get a complete history of chest pain shortness of breath heaviness indigestion dizziness palpitations syncope or uh, previous history of hypertension heart attack uh, heart failure or diabetes uh, stroke all these things that will help us to get a very quick understanding of what is happening to the patient what are his pre-existing conditions and what needs to be recognized immediately the supportive team will start the monitoring of the patient and also make sure that his airway breathing and circulation are adequate after taking vital signs and putting the patient on the monitor uh, they can do CPR if it is necessary but again the pulse oximeter is used to determine the oxygen saturation level and oxygen administered as necessary and in the hospital setup of course an IV line will be set up blood will be drawn for uh, complete chemistries and cardiac enzymes a chest x-ray will be obtained a 12 lead electrocardiogram is immediately obtained and the patient is given aspirin 160 to 325 milligrams preferably in a chewable form followed by nitroglycerin for control of chest pain if three doses of nitroglycerin 0 0.4 milligrams sublingually do not release the chest pain then morphine can be given as needed intravenously and as i said a complete fibrinolytic checklist is uh, uh, completed once these basic elements are put in place the next step will be to triage these patients with acute coronary syndromes. Let's move to the next part. Triaging the patient into three main categories, which I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, are STEMI or ST segment elevation myocardial infarction or non-STEMI or non-ST segment elevation myocardial infarction. And the last group is the low risk acute coronary syndromes where there is no evidence of any damage to the heart muscle where there are minor changes in the electrocardiogram nothing really concrete but the chest pain still needs to be evaluated or the acute coronary syndrome needs to be evaluated let us look at each one of these situations in depth and see how we proceed about managing these patients so let us start off with the STEMI which is ST segment elevation myocardial infarction this is 
a situation where there is a full blown heart attack or acute coronary occlusion which is associated with st segment elevation in two or more leads representing a region of the heart namely either the anterior wall or the inferior wall or the lateral wall so this is the anterior wall and this is the inferior region and this is the lateral region so based on that you're going to see changes in various groups of leads and that will tell you that this patient is having an acute st segment elevation myocardial infarction and if the patient had chest pain of less than 12 hours duration and you see an ST segment elevation of greater than 2 millimeters in two or more leads then you activate the STEMI team and uh, start with the prompt management of a patient with a STEMI which will be taking the patient to the cardiac catheterization lab for coronary intervention. In addition to ST segment elevation, another situation where a patient presents with a severe chest pain and has a left bundle branch block, that is also an indication to be treated as STEMI until proven otherwise. We can also start adjunctive therapies such as low molecular weight heparin or other type of blood thinners. The main aim here is to stabilize the patient, control the pain, maintain adequate circulation and oxygenation and transport the patient to the cardiac catheterization lab for coronary intervention. The goal here is to re-establish the coronary circulation by introducing a wire over which a balloon with a stent is passed and the plaque is compressed leaving the stent in place plastered to the wall thus re-establishing the circulation to the heart muscle which was uh, devoid of circulation just before he or she arrived in the emergency room. By doing this, we will minimize the damage to the heart muscle and re-establish the circulation. The goal is to accomplish coronary reperfusion in less than 90 minutes from the onset of uh, the chest pain. If the patient is being transported to a hospital where there is no coronary intervention facility available, then we should consider using fibrinolytic therapy to break down this clot. So at least we re-establish the circulation and also attempt to minimize the myocardial damage. In that situation, the fibrinolytic therapy must be administered within 30 minutes from the time the patient arrives at the emergency room. In addition to that, the patient will undergo a complete risk factors evaluation and management, which would also include plavix, statins, blood pressure control, beta blockers, and physical rehabilitation as needed. So this is in a nutshell about uh, STEMI or ST segment elevation myocardial infarction, which is the most serious form of acute coronary syndrome. Now let's look at the second form of acute coronary syndrome, namely non-ST segment uh, elevation myocardial infarction. This is usually characterized by ST segment depression in more than two or three leads representing a particular region of the myocardium. In this case, this is the inferior wall subendocardial ischemia or infarction associated with elevated cardiac enzymes or markers suggesting there is damage to the heart muscle. These patients are a little bit less severe than patients with the ST segment elevation, but nonetheless, the underlying pathology is very similar. And in many cases, the, the underlying plaque may be as severe as it is in a patient with a STEMI. So these patients need meticulous workup, just like those who present with the STEMI. But 
we have little time to evaluate these patients. These patients need to be evaluated in a prompt manner in the hospital emergency department and transported to the intensive care unit where they are closely watched with cardiac enzymes, cardiac monitoring and uh, look for any new changes in the electrocardiogram. These patients are also treated with uh, low molecular weight heparin as needed and if the patient's symptom worsen or if there are new changes in the electrocardiogram then these patients should be immediately taken to the cardiac catheterization lab for a possible coronary intervention if their condition is stable if their symptoms are controlled if the heart rate rhythm and blood pressure are stable then the patients can be evaluated and an elective cardiac catheterization may be considered 24 to 48 hours later. Again, as with patients with a STEMI, they need to have a complete comprehensive cardiovascular evaluation looking at all risk factors and treating them as needed. Patients with non-STEMI myocardial infarction also need to be on Plavix, statins, beta blockers and ACE inhibitors as needed. Now let's look at the next form which is the low risk acute coronary syndrome. At the beginning I said 50% of the people who have an acute coronary syndrome do not make it to the hospital because they drop dead. Among the people who come to the hospital 30% of the patients fall in this category of low risk acute coronary syndrome where they may turn out to have no cardiac problems whatsoever but when they arrive we have no idea to which category they actually belong hence all patients should be treated as acute cardiac patients until they are proven otherwise usually patients with low risk acute coronary syndromes present with minor non-specific stt changes they do not have the classic st segment elevation or deep ST depression with positive enzymes as we saw in non-STEMI. They usually have non-specific STT changes. The symptoms are usually lasting for less than 20 minutes or so. Nonetheless, they should be treated with uh, adjunctive treatments such as uh, low molecular weight heparin along with oxygen, aspirin, morphine as needed. And if the cardiac enzymes and the other blood markers are negative for evidence of myocardial damage these uh, patients may be, be washed and may undergo a nuclear stress test to see if we can provoke myocardial ischemia if the stress test is normal they should be treated based on their risk factors such as hypertension diabetes uh, high cholesterol obesity smoking and they need a thorough recommendation as to how to minimize their risk factors um, on the other hand if the stress test is abnormal if it is showing reversible ischemia these uh, patients uh, would be undergoing elective cardiac catheterization to see if there is any need for coronary intervention namely placement of a coronary stent anything that is needed so ladies and gentlemen in a nutshell this is an overview of uh, acute coronary syndrome which is a basket of uh, various types of uh, cardiovascular events that can present to us in the emergency room and in a hospital setup and we have talked about all the things that we need to do to first stabilize the patient second diagnose the underlying problem and three treat them appropriately that concludes the presentation on acute coronary syndromes i am dr nick nickham and thank you so much for watching this presentation we'll see you next time thank you so much for watching our program and please do subscribe to our youtube channel if you would like to support this program, you can look for the dollar sign on the right hand side of your browser and support in any way you possibly can. Again, thank you so much for watching this presentation and until next time, I am Dr. Nick Nickham.